In order to reach the surface of Venus before being destroyed, the Soviets redesigned the space probe to make it fall through the atmosphere more quickly. They added a cord to the parachute that would stop it from opening, allowing Venera to fall much faster. It was made of a material that would melt at 200 degrees, and so the parachute wouldn't open until the probe was much closer to the surface. Since the pressure on the surface was still unknown, the engineers went overkill with Venera's protection. The walls were two times thicker and the space probe could now withstand a pressure of 180 atmospheres. The Soviets were ready to put Venera 7 through hell. As it hit the atmosphere, the lander slowed all the way down and deployed its parachute. The cord did its thing and allowed the space probe to quickly fall through Venus's thick atmosphere. The probe was now much closer to the surface than any of the previous missions, until, with just three kilometers to go, the parachute tore itself apart, and the probe started plummeting to the ground, slamming into the surface at 60 kilometers an hour. The Soviets had another failure on their hands, or so they thought. A few weeks later, when reviewing the data, they noticed that a very weak signal had actually been transmitting for 23 minutes after the lander hit the surface. As it turned out, the lander actually survived, but it had been knocked onto its side, making the antenna's signal to Earth extremely weak. Incredibly, the last bit of data it sent out showed that the temperature at the surface was a mind-boggling 500 degrees. Since temperature was now the main problem limiting their time on the surface, the engineers came up with a genius but simple cooling solution for Venera 8. 